while the auto waits. At the early evening, the girl in gray came again to that quiet corner of a small park. She sat down upon a bench and began to read a book. Her dress was gray and simple. There was a hat with a large veil on her head, and her face shone through it with a calm beauty. She had come there at the same hour on the previous day, and on the day before that, and there was a young man who knew it. He was sitting near, and when the girl's book slipped from her fingers and fell on the ground, he picked it up, returned it to the girl gallantly, and stood for a moment, awaiting his fate. The girl looked at his plain clothes and his ordinary face. You may sit down if you like, she said in a contra alto. The light is too bad for reading. I would prefer to talk. The young man sat down on the seat by her side. Do you know, he said, that you are the prettiest girl I have seen in a long time? I had my eye on you yesterday, honey. Whoever you are, said the girl in an icy tone, you must remember that I am a lady. I asked you to sit down. If the invitation makes me your honey, I withdraw it. I beg your pardon, apologized the young man. It was my fault. There are girls in the park, you know. Of course, you don't know, but. Let's change the subject. Of course, I know. Now tell me about these people passing along these paths. Where are they going? Why do they hurry so? Are they happy? It is interesting to watch them, replied the young man. It is the wonderful drama of life. Some are going to supper, and some to. er. other places. I wonder what their histories are. I do not, said the girl. I am not so curious. I come here to sit because only here I can be near a beating heart of humanity. I want to talk with a natural man, one unspoiled by wealth and social superiority. Oh, you do not know how tired I am of it. Money, money, money. And of the men who surround me, all cut by the same pattern. I'm tired of pleasure, of jewels, of travel, of luxury. I always had an idea, said the young man hesitatingly, that money must be a pretty good thing. But not when you have so many millions that. She concluded the sentence with a gesture of despair. It is the monotony of it. Drives, dinners, theaters, balls, suppers. Sometimes the very tinkle of the ice in my champagne glass nearly drives me mad. The young man looked at her with interest. I have always liked to read and hear about the life of wealthy and fashionable people. I suppose I'm a bit of a snob, but I like to have my information accurate. I had formed the opinion. That champagne is cooled in the bottle, and not by placing it in the glass. The girl gave a musical laugh. You should know, she explained, that by the birth I belong to one of the noblest family. Just now it is a caprice to put ice in champagne. I see, admitted the young man. Sometimes, continued the girl, I think that if I ever love a man, It will be one of a lower position. But just now I am besieged by two men. One is a grand duke, and the other is an English marquis. And what is your business, mister? Parkenstacker, breathed the young man. A very humble one, but I hope to rise in the world. I work in a restaurant. The girl grimaced. Not as a waiter, she said. Labor is noble, but personal attendance, you know, valets and. I'm not a waiter. 
I'm a cashier in the restaurant you see there. The girl consulted a tiny watch on her left wrist and rose hurriedly. Why are you not at work? she asked. I'm on the night shift, said the young man. May I hope to see you again? I don't know, perhaps, but I must go now. There is a dinner and an opera and the same old round. Perhaps you noticed the white automobile at the upper corner of the park. I always come in it. My chauffeur is waiting for me there. We are going shopping. Good night. But it is dark now, said Mr. Parkenstacker, and the park is full of rude men. May I walk? If you want to see me again, said the girl firmly, you will remain on this bench for ten minutes after I have left. Again, good night. And she swiftly moved away in the dark. The young man watched her elegant figure when she was going to the entrance of the park. Then he rose and followed her, passing down the sidewalk of the street, opposite the park. The girl entered the restaurant with a brilliant electric sign. She entered it at its rear and quickly appeared without her hat and veil. The cashier's desk was to the front. A red-haired girl climbed down the stool, and the girl in the gray took her place. The young man put his hands into his pockets and walked slowly back along the sidewalk. Then he stepped into the automobile, reclined upon the cushions, and said two words to the chauffeur. Club, Henry.